meaning your praise. Heavenly Father, thank you this morning. You who can have heaven and the earth, the children are before you this morning. To see Anna and Joy, be not your name. Lord, we are here to give you Anna and praise for your name. Lord, we are human beings. We cannot do without you. That's why, Lord, we are asking this morning. So pray around with the Holy Spirit. So that whatever we will do, we be from you. Lord, we will convince everybody who is away. Appointment is your name. Lord, we are asking you to get the person set aside and speak to the person who has to hear the word. We also convince those of us who are present this day of our interest and listen to your hands. It is our humble prayer that Lord will give us a strength so that we can also obtain and save our hands to your name. We also ask for protection for our brothers who are coming from the way to see your hands. It is you who protect us and guide us and bring us safely here. So it's our humble prayer that we do the same as we can so that we also come and have part in this service. The God's name is not the Lord who keeps us with him. We thank you, which you are the Son of Jesus Christ, and we pray. Amen.
during crisis, and your attitude towards his his people is 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 like a desert out. Forget it. Don't expect God to be running to you. Your attitude. So your current spiritual condition is 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 commensurate. Is the same as your attitude towards God. Your current level of spirituality, your current level of Bible knowledge is is commensurate to how you, you view the scripture and your attitude towards scripture. So, and then the number four A. Ah, do you have four? Five years. So, attitude, time. That we said that time is the currency of life. And I want to go back to my no, but I want to start. Come and spend what? But you won't go back to my time. So, time management is life management. So, we have to, you have to learn how to manage your time. Because time is important. Um, Pastor, I'm not reading it from here. God, you push it. God, 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 God. Time is the currency of life. Life is lived in time. Time is the capital of life. Time is God's investment in us. Time is the most valuable asset in life. You need more than money. Because money lost may be regained. We have seen poor people who have become rich, right? When they ask you to have paid. But when you waste your time, how are you going to regain it? So be careful you use your time before it slips into the past. There's nothing you can do about your past. You can only learn from it. If there's anything you can change about your life, you can do it in the present. Because the past is dead and buried. The future is yet unborn, it's in the womb. What you can do, what you can influence, what you can do something about is today, your presence. When you do it, eh? you are going to be able to do it. When you do it, you will be able to do it. Forget it. There is always a link between what you do in the present and the future we create. So think about that. Again, final, uh, the subject of final judgment is time. We shall all appear before the judgment seat of God and then give an account of what we did with our life. In other words, life is time, right? So every moment, every minute, every second, you are going to give an account of what you did with your time. Because time is an investment. God gave to you. Time management is Life management. Whatever controls your time controls your life. If it is the number team me around, all of us, we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first with our time. So that God will add all other things to us. First of all, let's go. Character. We talked about all these things. We got here. So the question I'm asking us this morning is this. How conform is your character to that of God, to that of Christ? How similar, how same? If, if people saw you, the real you, would they see Christ in you? Huh? And we ended, not yet. Well, not yet may be a good answer, but are you in that process? Are you making that progress? Are you walking in the light as he is in it? Are you walking on the path of forming yourself according to his, his character? Unfortunately, the answer may be no for not many of us. Romans 12, that's where we had it, it ended. Let's, let's go back to that passage and begin from there. And then we can move on.
Romans 4. It's a very popular passage that most of us know.
I'm not asking of the fools, but not necessary. God created us human beings to aspire to be like Him. Aspiration to be like God, to think and feel like Him, is not meant for angels. It is meant for us. Is there a ocean to me complex mathematics, chemistry? You are able to add chemicals. But just growing into the image of God is a very idea. How can you survive? Brothers and sisters, this is an opportunity for you as young, because you see, Say a dear home. It's not now come here. So all China so who 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 near home. And we are here today. Go to our local congregations. People who fail to to pursue transformation and are now in leadership positions. They are destroying and 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 allowing people to to blaspheme the name of the Lord because of their behavior. This is an opportunity for you. If you think that the university is a is a is a, 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 a place of sin, it is true. But that gives you the opportunity to be different. Last week, Mrs. Dima asked this question. Uh, you read it, but look, the whole week I was thinking about it. Yeah. Mom said, you were spiritual drugstore, baby. I have one of the people who said, you are true. Peace scale. If you want to know peace, take this two times a day and peace will prevail. Mom will be better. So, love, love of peace. Love of peace. Peace of love. And uh, uh, self control bill. Sanu and our You know, you see, life in itself is a spiritual drugstore. When we want to learn these virtues, the conditions in the life, in this life, provides us the, the, the opportunity to learn some of these things. In the opposite of Kushiyam, Kushiyamwa, Nawabaha. Who will rule to yourself? Or oh, boyfriend and I'm what? So you have both the opportunity and the means and I'm what? Who pursues your self control? So what else do you need? Isn't this the perfect condition to learn? And I'm what? I want to ask it because Sadi Mamunya they have not been here. That's a point. You have an opportunity in this environment to show your spiritual growth, to show your aspiration to grow, to build your character in the image of God. Now you are here. Your parents may not be here. This is the opportunity to show whether you are able to grow or not. So, Kara, let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 16. Mm-hmm. So the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, you know, Jesus stipulates the character of people who should be, who are disciples, who are members of God's kingdom. He says, blessed are those who are poor in, in spirit.
This is not poverty of pocket. This is poverty of spirit. Right? So, a character of arrogance, a character of, of self-sufficiency, is you should not be part of people, the people of God. People who think that I am okay by myself. I don't need God. I don't need anybody. That will not do. That is not a kingdom characteristic. Blessed are the poor in spirit. People who are, who are going to be blessed, happy. Blessed means happy. People are going to receive divine congratulation. It's people who have the presence of mind and spirit to prostrate themselves before God and depend on Him for whatever they need spiritually. What else? Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. People who know the egregiousness of sin. What do you? What makes you cry? Huh? Boyfriend? Uh, no, I can broken heart. You be able to give to me young person in swan, not a boyfriend they damn. And I answer they are no need that. But say, ye be soon because of our inability to overcome sin and know that the, 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 the how sin separates us. No. We don't mourn for the, our own sins and the sins of others. We don't. Because we think that sin is what? Normal. But the character of a kingdom person is one who knows that sin separates. For the wages of sin is what? Death. So we mourn for sin. We mourn for the sins of others. And so always we are finding a way to spread the only solution to sin, the gospel. In our own lives and in the lives of other people. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Go on. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You see, the character of God's people is meekness. Strength under control. People who do not see humility as humiliation, but a spiritual virtue. If you want to understand meekness, think in terms of the elephant. Whenever I think about meekness, you see the elephant is huge and strong. But for the sake of what would happen if he decides to show his strength, he chooses to walk rather than run. Humility. People who have the measured appreciation of who they are, and therefore you do not have a difficulty bending backwards, bending forward. But that is expression. What would you lose if you allow people, if you prefer others over you? If you said, I'm sorry, thank you, I was wrong, what would you lose? What you gain from it? God's people are characterized by humility, meekness, like Jesus. He was the Son of God, but he did not find equality with God anything to be grasped. He was the Son of God. You may be the son of whoever, in your home, in your house, you are a king, but in God's kingdom, in the church, we are all servants, right? Jesus took upon himself the form of a servant. He behaved as one. He did not lose anything. Are you characterized by humility? Do you find humility a quality to embrace or something to show? Do you think being powerful means that you should never be humble? Do you think you should always step on people in order to increase your height? Humility, a character, something 
that must be part of our inner lining. Uh -huh. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What makes you hungry? What do you hunger and thirst for? What is your inner yearning to win by whatever means or to be righteous, to do what is right in the sight of God, irrespective of what you get out, out of? For most of you, you hunger and thirst for faith, for power, for money, and you don't care how that comes about. And I'm what? For you, righteousness is not something for you to do that righteousness you need. Yeah, you need it. Fire, man, I'll do it. As you pursue the things of life, a comma I was there, do I enjoy what I did? Hey, it's in Hunger and thirst for righteousness. How are you? How are you? Righteousness. Man, that's all. Oh, is there order? Uh-huh. For they shall be filled. Mm-hmm. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. What is mercy? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Mercy in its simplest form. Some people says it's not treating others the way they deserve. Grace is treating others the way they don't deserve. It can be confusing. So, all have sinned, right? And falling short of the glory of God, right? So what should be God's response to us? For the wages of sin is what? Sin. But God is gracious to us. He gives us what sinners do not deserve. Right? Right? Through Christ, eternal life. So that is grace. Some say it is unmerited favor. Favor that you do not deserve. Right? Ah, so that is grace. Mercy is this. That not, mercy is the negative of grace. Not giving to you what you deserve. So, when did we born it? Justice demands that I slap you. May, may, may Paul assume I may born it, right? It is being just. But instead of being just, I decide to be merciful. I will hold from you the punishment you rightly what? Deserve. Jesus says, for those of us in his kingdom, we are going to be blessed. When instead of pursuing justice, justice is easy to pursue, and I for that, but instead of pursuing that, we are merciful. We do not treat people the way they deserve. And so by her lifestyle, I don't need to have any relationship with her, but mercy. By her attitude, I am right if I withdraw fellowship from her, but mercy. Are you merciful? Is your character, is it within your character to be merciful? Or, I do me, you do me, I do you. Is that how your life is? Is that how you have lived your life up to this point? And you so think that you are a child of God. Brothers and sisters, mercy. What else? Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Purity and spiritual perception. You see, most of you, and it's not wrong, we want to see purity in hell. Blessed are the pure in hell. We wish Jesus had said that, because it is easy to be pure in heart, in hell, sorry. Correctness 
of doctrine, correctness of method, correctness of approach, pure in hand. Most of us in the churches of Christ, we, are, we pursue knowledge. As I usually say, we know where every comma and full stop is in scripture. Purity in head. What about purity of heart? Is your heart as pure as your head? Is your heart as clean as much as you know about God? Has the knowledge in your head been able to pierce your heart? Are you able to apply what you know to your life? Purity of heart. Jesus and I think, you know, Jesus is wise. And, and, and this is this is just stating the obvious. If Jesus had said, blessed are the pure in hand, the Pharisees would have claimed because they knew the law, right? I mean they thought they did. But when it came to living the law, applying it to the heart, they were found wanting. He says, it's not how much you know that can lead you to see God. It is how pure your heart is. Blessed are the pure in heart, for these are seen, perception. Do you know God? Do you have a relationship with Him? Knowing God goes beyond knowing Scripture. Having a relationship with Him goes beyond being able to be critical about things. It is how your heart moves that determines whether you know God or you see God or you perceive God. What is the color of your heart? Who sits on the throne of your heart? Is it as pure? That should be our character, purity of heart. What else? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Jesus did not say, blessed are the peacekeepers. Neither did he say, blessed are the peace fakers. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers enter a complex situation whilst it is raging. Let's talk about your heart. Is it 
accuracy we need more. So watch your words, right? Watch your attitude. Watch your watch your. Let's talk about the last letter, H. Your heart. You see, the problem of life is the problem of the heart. That's how I think about it. So let's read the text, foundational text for this afternoon. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Keep your heart with all these things. Mm -hmm. For out of it spring the issues of life. Amen. This is the advice from the wise man. You see? Today, what we are encouraged to keep well is our house, our money, what else, our car, right? There are security systems for the, the things we hold dear in this life. But I have not read of any security system for the heart, right? But, you see, Proverbs is what is called a social construction of reality. Proverbs teaches God's people how to live, what to perceive as real. And so the wise man is saying this, that if you are going to guard anything, if you are going to watch anything, if you are going to be alert about anything, begin from the, what? Because he says, because he says, it is out of the heart springs the issues of what? Life. How your life would look like, spiritual, social, moral, all emerges from your heart. Ah. So, if you are going to, and not long ago, my wife decided that we should move our gas cylinder from the kitchen and put it outside. And in order to achieve that, did you know what we had to do? We had to build a cage and insert it into the building, secure it before it moved. What? Well, then you see what's up, we have a garment so we have to secure it. That is the image the white man is saying. Do not put your heart out there without securing it. Do not allow everything, everyone access to it. Because the quality of your life will be, will be determined by the quality of your heart. Why? Because the heart is the seat of our desires. I you But I didn't buy desire power and sana every you are brought on a part. So now advertisement. The way to get to our heart is through our eyes and the things we hear our senses. So on TV, yo, on TV, we see a number of things, right? And then it's either we subconsciously approve or reject. When we approve, we cease. It becomes part of the thing we want to. If we reject it, then it's something we don't want. So let me ask you. What are the desires of your heart? And then what come up? And then the one man who find out what now what come up? And you see, who did a dream no one from? What are the desires of your heart? Anybody wants to be honest? That's the Bible class. Time for you to talk. What are the desires of your heart? And how is that affecting your life? What can I say? Eh? Ms. Rimbaud, yes. Hold on, hold on. My book will never come. Oh, what can I say? What can I say? What can I say? Thank you. So we have allowed the love of money into our heart, right? And that is what is influencing our choices and decisions. What else? Wow. Yes. Relationships. No one can. 
You see? Remember this. And I'm saying and I'm ending. Maybe next we'll continue. Desires will always bring about demands. Write it somewhere. Desires will bring about demands. A Roman's desire to look pretty demanded that she stayed there over the time that she did. And the media a lot. When you are replacement. Rama. Hey, you see, your desire for quick money would demand that you engage in gambling and you would dissipate every resource. Desires lead to demands. Your desire to be in a relationship would demand that you, you throw your values to the dogs. Be careful of your desires. Be careful of what you allow into your heart, brother and my sister. Be careful. All things are lawful. Not, not all things are sweet. Okay. Now the world is selling desires. And you know, they sell the desire and they tell you, you deserve it. No, you don't. You don't. Huh? The first thing you need to desire is to be in the presence of God. God, supposing you are here. So you can come on. I'm going to hear you now. I have said here that Nanga may have no eyes here on the You see, God did not bring him to Adam until Adam had God's presence. Most of you do not have any foundation in the spirit yet. You want to test your body. How do you think that will end? I don't have to ask you. I know you know. Yeah? And they're all. When you, when you go back to your dormitory, do something for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sit down and do a list of your desires and do an audit. Ask yourself, what place does this ought to have in my heart? Audit your desires, my sister, my brother. And you may win now. And you may say, wait now. Who do you mean to ask? Audit it. Just list them and audit them. You know why? Because very soon, the demand will start falling. And like an alcoholic demanding a fix, like somebody who is addicted, you know, when the demands are coming, you may not be able to resist it. But the demands did not come until the desires were initiated. How do you get rid of the desires? As I'm saying, list them down. Determine the desires that you think should not have any place. Acknowledge them. I, 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 I. Publicly, these are the desires I've harbored over the years. Now I feel they do not have any place in my heart. I want them to leave me. Just like Judas. Judas saw his desire and the demand he made that 30 pieces of silver he brought them out in the open. Take it. I don't want it anymore. Huh? <laughs> so, what does one read? If you are here for me, this is I that. If you trust that God is going to forgive you and create in you a new heart, you don't have to commit suicide. Once you have openly admitted and openly renounced those, those desires, it will be time for you to replace that old desire with new healthy desires. It is not good enough for you to renounce them without replacing them. Because nature abhors a battle. How do you replace them? Do God's work. Finding spiritual desires that must fit into your heart. 
then the demands that will come. You see, David was not a perfect person, but he had one single desire to constantly be in a spiritual relationship with the Lord. And so because of that desire, he was constantly renouncing the unhealthy ones that found their way into his heart. That is the only reason David is said to be the man after God's own heart. Well, Mr. Jim, I saw your hand first, but I want to be nice. I will. Why? Why you You know, you are walking up. Also, um, I would like if you talk about the marriage issue. You know, you talk about it. You talk about something. You talk about it. How can you say it's okay? So it's obvious when you are my own. Oh, 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 I, 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 you need to have a <laughs> you want what? your question by relating the story. Yeah. Huh? She has allowed that desire to seep down into the heart. I, Ivy, you have a desire. You know I know. We, uh, and I think you know the answer to this question. Everyone now knows the that question. <laughs> you get it? You see, when our desire is not for God first, we allow other desires that is going to wreak havoc on our lives to take trust, um, to take precedence, and to take advantage of our heart. And that leads to a lot of challenges. If this lady trusted the Lord and felt validated by her relationship with God, do you think she would have put herself, her family through all these ordeals? So that is why it is important to seek God first and his kingdom first so that all other things will, make, will be meaningful to us. If the desire for God and our relationship with him is driving our personal desires, it shapes the things we desire for and what we do in order to acquire that desire. If any desire threatens your relationship with God, it tells you something. And if you are okay pursuing that desire, it tells you something about yourself. So, I think in, in relation to marriage, you, you know what I'm talking about. Therefore, you don't want to. Is that him? Your hand was up. I, on what I did just said, I think um, Sarah made a similar um, mistake. Yes. When she designed a child, and she gave a baby to her own husband. Later on, there was a level of trauma in the house. Uh, yes. The last part. <laughs> okay. Um, 
the question is how it, money it's not necessarily bad I think um, power is not necessarily bad um, whatever fashion so I are you suggesting that we should not desire these things um, I think it's it's the sequence and the priority we give it in our hearts. You get it? Everything, these things that you have mentioned, God has promised that if we assess his presence, if he is the main thing in our lives, all of these things he would add to us. And it is the blessing of the Lord that makes a man great. And he adds no... You get it? And so if these things take precedence instead of God, you know, like, we don't care what we need to do to get them. And it, it adds sorrows to our lives and even kills the relationship we have with God. We, we lose ourselves. We become, we lose the image of God in us, the spirit of God in us. And that is dangerous. But how does having a relationship with God first mm -hmm affect our desires for these things. Having a relationship with God sort of gives us the right perspective of life and the thing and informs our value system. You get it? And so we know that things that are so important and the things that are not so important. You get it? Our, our minds, our thoughts are ordered and patterned along the values of God. So my wife is just asking, I, uh, no, I ask a rhetorical question. Who is the canon the yede? I don't think I saw him. Who is the canon the yede? So in Yambu Bomb, soon soon to you, that's the Punya Sikana. You use it in expanding God's kingdom and not your buttocks. Or your friends. <laughs> you get it? You use it not to make, not for conquest, and count the number of women, what's on And the number, you know, like, you're, you love to help people and grow people, invest in, and all those kinds of things. You don't use the things for evil. If I have to put it that way. My last question is this. Um, you are saying that we should do self-assessment today if we went home. Mm -hmm. For some of us, it's very difficult for us to admit things to ourselves, even in our own process. We know that in the it's a very difficult. How do we move from that? Because we have to admit to ourselves first before we can do the needful. But if we are unable to admit to ourselves, we are in this state. Tajima, you know, there are things people can do for you. There are things nobody can do for you. Admitting who you are and your challenges, nobody can do it for you. This is a, when you're, if you are willing to be vulnerable, to go to that space, there will be no change in your life. In my go-to passage is the story of the prodigal son, right? Nobody admitted his condition for him. He came to a realization that he's now desperate. He's feeding on big feed. And that his father has a lot. And so he says, I will go back. So, you see, if your heart is lined with the virtues and characteristics we discussed in the sermon of the Beatitudes, it's, it's not... It's not so difficult for you because your need for God becomes greater and bigger than your need to be right. You understand? So it's something you have to do for yourself. Yes. Time out. We have a lot of hands. We have brother by problem with the middle. Man have to make it snap, okay, so other people can get there. Peter, my question is, talking of desires and assessment, let's say I have assessed myself and I have found a particular desire in me, which is affecting me in a negative way. I have tried to overcome that, but I still I can't. How can I overcome it? Come talk to me. Okay? Seek resources. 
resources beyond yourself. And they say, oh, solve a math equation. Now I own you. Back on your equation, what's all the that? We'll talk about some of these things. Um, brothers and sisters, the church does not only exist to eat bread on Sundays and give and sing. Those are important things. But I know there's a passage, I don't remember. I said, one song, no, 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 no. We are supposed to help and support one another, even in times of difficulty with, with spiritual struggles. So, maybe you have a new year, you have a new year. If you have a new year, 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 you have a new year. If you are open to me, even if I name it one part, by virtue of where I sit, I know people who may have resources that will help you. You get it? So come to me, be honest about it, and then together we'll find a solution. You get it? When we say it is stupid to suffer alone, this is part of it. It is stupid to keep your spiritual struggles all to yourself when you could find resources among us. If you feel too big, to say you need help to be too small to be in heaven. You understand? Well, there is no bed of me. Yes, uh, Eddie King. I think I saw Eddie King. You hold on. Let me, I saw Eddie King's hand. Please make it stand so others can have it. So, 
the question is not about what sex. It is how consistent is your desire with God's desire for you? The purpose is not your own creation. It is God's creation. You know that. You believe that. Uh -huh. So purpose now is that is what you said, what said. Is it your own purpose you have created or it is you have discovered that this is God's purpose for you? Whatever God's purpose for you will not be inconsistent with his word. So you may not have to change it. And so there shouldn't be any confusion. You may be confused because perhaps you find some inconsistency between this purpose and perhaps God's word. If that is not it, there should be there should be any confusion. Okay? And so don't let confusion become your your, your favorite in visual. Okay? Think about it. Yes, yes. Uh, in answer to uh, if you have this book, Purpose Driven Life, have you read it? Go, go and find it and read it. So it's in answer to that, what Mr. Ekima was saying. As he was asking the question, it's okay to me that there's a story in the Bible uh, that gives a similar answer, or let's say a good answer to that. And um, when Solomon gave the sacrifices to God, mm -hmm. and then God asked him what he wanted, he said he wanted to give wisdom. Mm -hmm. And after asking for wisdom, the Bible says that God added them to him riches and all other things. And so for me, what I'm seeing here is like a comparison between that and what you are saying. That we should seek first the kingdom. And every other thing, like the way God added riches and wisdom to Solomon's name, every other thing also be added. Just that we must first seek the kingdom of God. If if you have God's kingdom and and the things about God's kingdom, you you are better placed to handle material things. If you don't have God's kingdom, his spirit, his wisdom, material things will destroy you and destroy people around you. So so a young person now so you go and shower. That's all. But, but why, why, you don't know even the things about yourself, but you are looking for money. What do you think? Why can't you want to drain out you? You cannot control your mind. Who pays it? What do you think? What do you think? What do you So, So, I think my question from where you just said, seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all this, all this can be cast, happy marriage, whatever. But by then, you know, people who, uh, when growing up, they take God, they set God very well, and they make this kids. But after that, from after some two, three years or whatever, as they forgot, as they forget God, like, they are not close to God, spiritually. So the answer can be like this cross temptation. This is where the question comes. Why should God intend I put in this no people to temptation? What's his name? What's his name? What's your name? My name. My name is Abraham. God doesn't tempt. We, we are easily tempted by our own desires and what we want to achieve. So, you are saying initially they were closer to God. God blessed them with certain things. And what happened? So probably they, their desire changed. So they started desiring something else. They, they think they have this, so they have to pursue something else. And they didn't stay focused on what they were doing initially, what they were pursuing initially. So it is not God that sends us. Probably he, he is allowing us to be refined. Sometimes he allows certain things so that we come out refined and we will appreciate the things he's given us. So we may be going through certain things because he wants us to know how he is blessing us so that we appreciate. But it is our temptation that is on our own last and is at the time for Michael, thank you. Michael, uh, this will take me back to, I'll say this and they'll prove, to the prodigal son. You see, sometimes. God wants to teach us a lesson of life by giving us the things we ask for. You get it? This young man was not satisfied with having the presence of his father. He wasn't 
he did not value that he lived with his father. He valued material things more. And so for God, for the father to show him what is more valuable in life, he sort of acquiesced to his request. And so when he took the things and went and squandered and discovered that freedom isn't free and that material things do not satisfy, he came back. Imagine the kind of child you become after this experience. I don't understand. So, brothers and sisters, be careful what you are praying for, okay? Because sometimes the greatest test God will do to you or give you is by giving to you the things you are praying for. It is going to reveal a lot about you. you so, in conclusion, we are not done yet, but what we have said this morning, in essence, guard your heart. Be careful what you say yes to. Be careful what you say, what you drool about. You know drooling. Be careful what, what you're excited about. Precious. Yeah. Hey. 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 Be very careful with these desires. Because, yeah, through this socialization, oh, if you lose something, you may never recover. Boys, want us to be very careful. Guard your. Because out of it emerges the issues of your. May God bless the hearing of his word. Amen. Amen.
the brethren who lead us in today's service. I will entreat all those who have a part in this service to meet behind for a short discussion. Shall we rise up as I will rise up as we take our for this morning's service. I will be taking from the book Paul wrote the Corinthians, the first Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. I read. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? As one receives the prize. Run in such a way that we may obtain it. 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we want a perishable crown. 26. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as man who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into, con and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached, preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. I think that the twin said the But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached, to others, I myself should become clear in the scripture. May the good Lord bless it now and forever. Amen. Shall we invite our sons to that to come with us? We shall you do that.
Jemiti Ministry in Camp, Kill Number 81. Please, let's say one verse and then we, we take the first prayer. Shall we, shall we take our first prayer? We thank you, Father Almighty, for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you continue to do in our lives. We thank you, Jesus Christ, that you last week, as much more than what you have done to us in the days, that you are living for the things that you do in our lives. We continue to do the things that you do in our lives. And then, your mercy is our own. Okay, I can walk around. It's not necessary to move the start and then use this thing in the original. I can actually stand here. Thank you for the words, the knowledge that has been imparted to us this morning. That we should watch our activities, we should watch our words, our attitude, our time, our character, and our heart. We pray for the speaker, we pray for the preacher, that such knowledge never depart from him, such knowledge will be discussed in his life, and then any time he takes the Bible that he wants to speak your word, he gets more and more of it. We are praying for meeting the rest of the service into your hands. Yeah. 
getting to this equally important aspect of our service where we dine with our Lord. As it has been instituted to be the only thing we use in remembering our Lord Jesus Christ as written in the Lord has in the Bible. In Matthew 26, verse 26 to 30, it is recorded that as Jesus met with his disciples, he picked bread, which he used to signal, he used as a symbol of his body for them to take, and later pick wine, which was a sign of his blood. Likewise, he picked the bread and prayed to God. Shall we pray? We thank you, our Father in heaven, for our lives. We adore you for who you are and who you have made us become. As we met this morning, we give it a great honor to partake in this important activity. All that we ask is that you sanctify us this day so that we do it to the glorification of your name. This is our humble prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we partake in the bread, we we'll take our king him now and turn to hymn number 79. We we'll sing while we ponder over the words, it is how our Lord suffered. Oh, I see. Yes, you probably. I see me out. Yes, you probably. I see me out. Ready? Go. Yes, you probably. I see me out. Yes, you
time for us to give and what we should know is that whatever we have, we are just stewards of it, of them, our money, everything. So the Lord requires of us that when we meet as a family, we give to support the work of his own. So this one, you need not to be convinced before you give. But we have an assurance that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So let's put our hands in our pockets and let's take our money as we pray and give. Sorry, pray. Holy God, mutable God, ever merciful God, ever faithful God, we thank you for this morning. Father, we thank you for seeing us through our love so far. Father, at this juncture, we are coming to peace. Father, we pray that you be with us. Father, we pray that you help us so that you give safely. Father, we pray that you see us too, so that at the end, we wouldn't cease to give you glory and honor. This is what we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, name, and we pray the son to you. Amen. Chee him number one three seven.
that you bless the money so that whatever it will be used for in your kingdom will be a blessing. We commit the rest of the service into thy care. That you continue to direct and guide us for us to worship you accordingly. To receive all the blessings you have for us today. This is the minimum we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God for our Father and brother and sister. We shall send some chorus. Please be upon us. Let's be on our feet.